Welcome everyone to another live stream, a short one for this new style of testing short episodes here, some small updates, because I realized on my other video that is quite viewed and liked there on YouTube regarding microkernels, some ideas and vision and concepts and such, I wanted to share one more detail because I forgot to mention one detail I had there. Um, this idea of jitting drivers just in time compiling drivers and I forgot to mention why I even want to do this and I wanted to provide this short update here for you to share because you might wonder why do I need to jit drivers this is not a totally crazy idea and completely unnecessary complexity and this is also why I remembered about this with this benchmark results that I just shared here you can watch the previous live stream if you're interested in this vast compilation here of various GCC compilers and that of course for some multimedia cases and such mathematical neural network and whatever cases this can have some performance benefit but of course not for all classic programs that do some control flow stuff like um, regular UI stuff clicking there some button and such probably mostly waste of time anyway and so why jitting drivers? Drivers was just an example. I actually meant jitting everything, like more like applications and such, and of course not as doc slow as Java, because certainly Java is too slow for my taste, but this is probably also because Java is simply too complex with this huge frameworks and such, and maybe not as good to optimize as something as Lua, as pr proven with state-of-the-art Lua JIT. And this is also, so you see, what I just said in the other live stream with my portable SSD here that I run Linux from, even this live stream, so this is my portable development system, system mentions this often already. And one reason I optimize this only for core to do is this exactly the performance difference for regular pro programs like yeah, all the command line stuff from bash to whatever, even the Linux kernel is not that huge and then it is simply not worth my time and discomfort plugging it in somewhere and it doesn't work, doesn't boot because illegal instructions and driver is only one thing. Of course, this was only the point of microkernel. Of course, everything, applications and such isn't that amazing, not just like, a, of course, I mentioned this before, transmitter code morphing, not the most amazing performance, but as seen with Lua JIT, Lua JIT has some cases where Lua JIT is faster than C even for some kind of multimedia like inner loops and such. And this is only what I wanted to add on. Of course, not only JITting drivers, this was just one example that would be amazing. Imagine here this capture dongle, only only stuff and then you have this as a user space process, user space driver, and it is just jittable as everything else. And if you boot on a latest and greatest Intel, whatever silicon with AVX, then you have even AVX available in your multimedia drivers, be it video capture, video playback, <coughs> graphic cards and whatnot. And this is just one point I wanted to make and this would also be really nice in my opinion. You have some code morphing like JITSYNC similar to Android which is also obviously JITted and then you have some even on Android this latest uh, Android runtime stuff that is JITting applications after just in time or ahead of time compilation after installation and in my opinion this would be completely amazing. For example you don't need to ahead of time JIT this like on Android where you I think it is at least, as far as I remember, I read somewhere, it is ahead of, ahead of time jitting this on installation, for example, or on first boot up or whatever. And you don't even need to do this. You can do this dynamically, even cache it on your SSD, obviously, or wherever, if you have an iMac with old fashioned rotational storage. <coughs> And then you can even reuse this from the last boot up, obviously, as if the processor architecture is similar enough with the feature set. And if it is more different than, or for, yeah, more different, either more features, you could even do this very intelligently. For example, that if it is just having more features, you can still use the old JIT results, the cache 
rigid result. Obviously, for example, in case of shared objects, just load your cached precompiled uh, shared object there from the last run. And if it has less features, obviously you can't do this, but if it has more features, you could even gradually re-optimize this for inner loops. As I said, my idea of this um, non interpreting tracing JIT compiler of just having completely unoptimized very fast JIT paths and only re-optimize stuff like a tracing JIT compiler just not without an interpreter but just from really fast code that is completely unoptimized but just runs for the tracing sake and yeah these are just some more details I wanted to throw in there obviously again to summarize this JIT not only for drivers but for everything but just that drivers um, benefit from this as well and this is also what makes then driver development obviously very easy and handy to do this with normal applications that you can like I have quoted there on some other live stream this is Redox OS that had in my opinion I was not the most impressed but this server things looked like socket communication even for block devices of course I would do this more high performance but then you would have normal programs like on Minix that can even be restarted in case of a failure. There is some whatever storage thing issue and you can even restart your storage stuff. And by the way, one really annoying thing that I really wonder that this is not yet optimized more, but then again, my use case is slightly um, different. Should have switched the camera though. Maybe I need here dedicated camera buttons. So for this, um, SSD, external SSD, there are two really annoying things here on Linux, but correct me if I'm wrong, if I missed something, the two really annoying things are that you cannot suspend and resume, that I really wonder, I think this even works in macOS, that if you start macOS from an external storage, you can suspend and resume for energy, I mean this full system, suspend and resume for sleeping, suspending, and this doesn't work with Linux as far as I know, because you lose the root device in Linux for USB devices, as far as I know, can probably, at least I tried a couple of times, multiple years apart. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it doesn't work. This is one of those things that I really wonder why nobody, well, slightly not every day's use case, but why does it still not work? And the second thing is that if you plug this out accidentally, happens every month, well, unfortunately this happens once a month to me, I plug this out accidentally, moving the laptop around, uh, plugging something else in, and such and this fragile small USB-C uh, cable slips out there and then you don't have a root file system and Linux cannot recover from this. This is also if I would write this of course to little bit exceptional cases but why not make this work and in my opinion with this complete user space setup there user space driver such kind of things might be more usable because why can this not recover in Linux, the root device is gone, the USB device is gone, and you plug it in, it gets a different num rated USB thing, and in the kernel, as far as I've seen, no recovery mechanism to recover reattached USB devices. And of course, not amazing, but it should probably be doable. But as, at least this is um, not as important thing, the more important thing would be suspend and res uh, resume there. That is. Um, that is, uh, yeah, in my opinion, things that could be done. And one more thing, as the only thing that in for this multi-server microkernel thing, the one really difficult thing, in my opinion, probably is suspend resume in general. It is probably way more complicated to suspend and resume all these user space drivers in a reliable manner. However, in Linux, for example, I think most of these drivers are also um, I think USB stuff probably is all, this is why this unmounting also doesn't work, unmounting and remounting with suspended root device there. So in Linux, of course, the whole device tree is suspended from the device tree nodes in reverse order and something like this you would need to do on the mighty server user space microkernel thing. I, well, it's just, I think this is probably one of the more difficult things to do, but well, the Linux people, well, although on the Linux side, it's probably still a little bit fragile sometimes. <clears throat> and yeah, Linux also had a quite hard time getting this working. I remember when I had my iBook 15 years ago, 16, 18, whatever years ago, then 
in Linux. This is why I had the iBook on iBook. It was a little bit more reliable and on x86 it was a little bit more fragile. And then again, even today, for example, on the surfaces, it doesn't work with some Marvel wireless thing there. So still not perfect in Linux. Although I think it probably works 98% of the cases. But again, as usual, if you have more input there, more data points, just let me know. Always interesting to hear what you think and what your experience is. And yeah, just wanted to share this kind of ideas, where I'm coming from, what are these ideas and is it completely crazy or doable? And I will probably continue to experiment more. Just wanted to share this more general broad overview. Questions in the audience? No, I'm not French. And citizen of the world or something and wish you good at Linux to help, but I'm still learning it. Yeah, no problem. Yo, everyone's welcome. As usual, just ask or ask questions or give answers or comments. Everything welcome. These are the short streams so far for today. Mostly the optimization update here and why I think with this kind of results, mostly this kind of optimizations are probably a little bit superfluous, but of course for multimedia in our cases quite welcome. And also this would also mean if you have old software, if you have some bitcode, pre-compiled bitcode or something like Android or whatever, and you have this dynamic just-in-time generation and re-optimization, this would also mean if you have an application and you have an a year later, of course, with software update for, for the JIT, for the just in time compiler, you could have software making use of AVX 512, for example, this latest Intel um, advanced vector extension. And this, the sad fact, of course, is that nowadays with this pre-compiled C-like, doesn't matter so C, C++, Rust and such executables, this is all pre-compiled and if you have a new vector extension like AVX512 and whatnot. Most programs actually don't make use of this, especially on Windows and Mac OS, only some inner multimedia loops. And even for my use case here on my, even, even here for my build from source Linux, as I said, I don't over optimize anymore because it's simply just too annoying for me with sometimes using vintage machines and such. And even for this use case, it would be nice if this would automatically just in time compiling for the latest and greatest vector extensions just for OBS running even more smooth and whatnot. Speaking of smooth, sp still some 1200 drop frames, still need to probably chat with Vodafone here in regards to whatever is with this not that amazing broadband connection. So I hope you learned something and if you're more interested in this results, again, if you probably pause the video in full HD and want to take a closer look, then you are welcome and if you want to run them yourself, this source is of course available for a decade or so in our open source there called Open Bench or so, as I've done this for compiler benchmarks just like this, what it was intended for. And if you're interested to compare multiple vintage systems, I've run this over 25 vintage systems here from Pentium to SGI, Octane, Hewlett Packard, PA, uh, PA, Risk and other fun stuff in between, Sun Solaris and Transmit Efficient, G4 Cube and P3 and such. So if you are interested to compare the performance of those, you can also watch that video. I hope you learned something and to see you soon for the next videos to come.